Hey everyone! Last month, I spoke about a contest that gives 40,000 US dollars to its top performers. Today, we'll be looking at a really interesting problem from this year's contest. The problem involves the definition of a convex region, so let's very quickly recap what this means. A, a region is said to be convex if for any two points that are given inside the area, the entire line segment connecting the two points is also inside the region. Now, this problem involves a convex region in the plane that contains the point 0, 0 and nn, where n is a given positive integer. Let's call this region D. The, the challenge of this problem is to be able to guide a robot from the point 0, 0 to nn without ever leaving the region D. Now, each day, the robot will make a move. So it will have to make uh, two n moves over a span of two n days in order to reach nn. On each day, it will make one move to the right uh, by default. So for example, moves to the right here, it moves to the right again. But you are given a remote control, and if you press the remote control, it will instead move up on the given day. Now, you are given n of these remote controls. The thing is that for each remote control, each of them has a specific schedule of which days you are allowed to press the controller on. So, for example, the first controller, you can press on the first and third and fourth day, but not on the second and fifth and sixth day, and so on. Now, what you know is that if you are using each controller individually, let's say you are only using the first controller, then its schedule of allowed days is enough for you to bring the robot from 0, 0 to NN. Similarly, if you're just using the second controller on its own and its allowed days, you can actually press the controller on suitable days and bring it from 0, 0 to NN without it ever leaving the convex region D. Same thing for the third controller and so on. The challenge is now you are only allowed to press each of these N controller exactly one time and you can only press a controller on its allowed day. Proof that you can still succeed in bringing the robot from 0, 0 to NN. So this problem is very interesting because it first sounds quite trivial and then if you think more about it, it suddenly sounds like it's impossible and then it sounds really trivial again and then it sounds really impossible again. Now actually, the most brilliant part of this problem is that in order to prove it, there is actually a very elegant solution that approach it orthogonally, not directly, and then bam, the problem is solved. Let me illustrate why this problem seems quite easy, but then actually is actually very difficult to approach directly. Now, how might you approach a problem like this? You might initially try to prove that in the first place, you can find a day that you press the first controller, a day that you press the second controller, and so on, without caring too much about uh, whether the robot will ever exit D or not. And you can very easily come up with such a schedule, because the fact that each controller is able to bring you from 0, 0 to n, n means that, I mean, each controller must necessarily have at least n days uh, on which you are allowed to press it. So, Firstly, for the first controller, you have n, at least n options of uh, when to press it. Of course, you can choose any one of them. And then for the second controller, you again have at least n options and at most one of these dates have been used for the first controller. So you still have plenty of options on when you want to press the second controller. Similarly and so on, even until the last controller, uh, you have at least n ticks and you have only used n minus one, at most n minus one days, uh, among these sticks for pressing the other controller. So you will definitely have at least one option left over on which you can press the end controllers. So it's very easy to come up with a schedule where you can uh, press a controller on a valid day exactly once for each controller. However, the problem is a, a arbitrary way of choosing uh, such ways of picking the, the dates might end up you pressing the ro the controller too often near the start, for example, and end up exiting the area D. So you might think, okay, how do I then uh, make, maybe I can make swaps between certain controllers. Instead of pressing controller I on a certain day and J on another day, I swap the two around. But it might not, uh, controller J might not be allowed to be pressed on that 
day that I controller I was pressed and so on. So it starts to get very complicated and confusing. Uh, and instead, this method actually is not very good. We should approach the problem from another perspective. So let's throw away the grid for now. And let's think about the days in which you press the first controller. So since the first controller has a way of bringing you from 0, 0 to n, n, let's pick any one fixed way. So for the fixed way, let's say you press the first controller on day A11, then A12, A13, and so on until A1n. Similarly, for the second controller, you have a fixed way. You can pick one fixed way of bringing the robot to an end, and you write down the dates at which you press the controller. And so on for the third day until the nth day. Okay, how might you guess a way of picking the dates to press each controller. Does it make sense for you to pick the first date on which you press each controller? No, that's not a very good way because you'll be uh, clamping the dates towards the front. You'll be pressing the controllers a lot in the front and that has a high chance of bringing you out of D. And also there's no, by pressing the, by choosing the first dates on which you press each controller, there's a high chance of the dates clashing because they are, they are all near, gathered near the front. So one, logical guess to get a generally um, set of dates that generally seems to be moving forward in time, you will want to try to guess picking the diagonal entries. So this is where the clever idea comes in. You're like, oh, what if I pick the first date that I press the first controller, the second date that I press the second controller and so on. Generally, it seems to be an increasing set of dates and seems pretty spaced out. Now, this is actually the main idea, uh, but it's not ready uh, quite yet. For example, you might end up with this situation where first controller you press on dates 4, 5, 6 and so on, second controller as shown, third controller as shown, and then you the diagonals do not actually form a strictly increasing sequence. In fact, you might even get clashing dates. So this seems to not quite work yet, but actually, why why would you put the third controller as the one that is on days one, two, three, it makes more sense to try and bump that up as first controller, right? So the ordering of the controllers is one degree of freedom you have to uh, rearrange the ordering of the controllers so that the diagonal dates work. So how would you order your controller so that the diagonal entries work? Well, let's look at all the controllers uh, first press date. Let any, let, um, among all these different controllers, we choose the one with the minimum entry that could be multiple in which you just pick an arbitrary one. That is the controller that we shall call entry, uh, remote control number one. And then now we look at the second press date of the remaining controllers that have not been assigned a number. Again, we pick a controller that has a minimum press date and we call that controller number two. And now we look at the remaining controllers that have not been assigned a number and we look at the third press date and we pick the controller that has a minimum third press date, breaking ties arbitrarily. We call that controller number three and so on. And now we seem to have a good ordering of the controllers that make some intuitive sense. And I claim that the diagonal entries of this, uh, way of picking actually forms a strictly increasing sequence. And this is very easy to show. For example, how do I show A22 is less than A33? Well, looking at the definition of A22, it is picked to be the minimum number among the numbers in blue. So A22 is less than or equal to A32. And A32 is of course strictly less than A33 because it is a sequence of dates on which the third controller is pressed. So by a very similar argument for all the other entries, we can show that the diagonal entries are strictly increasing. So we actually have a pretty good heuristic way of uh, picking the dates, but we still haven't proven that the robot will never leave the region D. Now, this is where the next clever part of the proof comes in. So let us show that for each of the line y equals k, uh, the points visited by the robot, if we follow the green numbers, uh, we'll never exit the point, the, we'll never exit the region D. 
So for, for simplicity, I'll show it for y equals 2, but the argument works for all the other y equals k values. So let's look at the line y equals 2, and on the right are the dates on which we press the remote controls. Now, when will you end up on the line y equals 2? You end up on the line y equals 2 after pressing the remote control for the second time. That is when you first touch the line, and then you continue moving rightwards until you press the remote control for the third time uh, upon which you will leave the line. So there's an ent entry point and a leaving point, and the points in between are the points you visit on the point on the line y equals 2. Now, let's think about the first robot. It has a certain entry point and certain exit point. So uh, as I recap, the if we had done this experiment with the first controllers only by its own, uh, we will have entered uh, after pressing on the day A12 and leave after pressing on the day A13. So that's the entry point and exit point as shown. Similarly, for the second controller, if we had done this uh, experiment using only the second controller, there's a certain entry point and exit point. Similarly, for the third controller, similarly for the fourth controller, and so on. Now, all these entry point and exit points are indeed by definition of uh, the controllers being able to succeed individually. So the leftmost entry point and the rightmost exit point, they are both in the region D. And because the region D is convex, the entire line segment from this leftmost entry point to the rightmost exit point all lies in D. And actually you have already proven what you want because if you use the green numbers, the entry point, which is A22, will be at least as left, if not, it will lie to the right of the leftmost entry point. And similarly, uh, the exit will happen after pressing on day A33, which will be uh, on or to the left of the rightmost exit point. So it will definitely lie in the green part, the green line segment, which we already show lies in D. So, a really clever proof that uses a heuristic guess of how to pick your numbers. And that is really all that I want to cover in this video. Hope you enjoy it. I'll be covering another brilliant algebra problem from this contest shortly. So stay tuned and see you soon.